enforcement funds during prohibition. In terms of Jacques Lacan's lost object, the object A exists for, de for desire to exist. The point of desire, of course, is to further its own continuance, essentially a fulfillment through not being fulfilled. Still, for desire to be, Lacan says there must be an object that causes it, even if the object only exists as absent, and that is the object A. The object A, according to Lacan, exists only as an object that has been fundamentally lost. Bruce Stink puts it aptly when he says that the object A is only constituted as lost after the fact, and that the subject is unable to find it anywhere other than in fantasy or dream life. Using Freud's text as a springboard, the object can be viewed as always already lost. Another way of saying this would be, the only time one can truly have a lost object is when it is dead, which means that no one can ever have a lost object at all. A multitude of objects of desire exist in Boardwalk Empire, and the two most notable ones concern the main character of the show, Enoch Ernecki Thompson. The first lost object is alcohol. Just eight minutes into the first episode of Boardwalk, the audience is shown a parade in which a giant casket with a corpse bottle of John Barleycorn is marched down the street in a mock funeral. What is shown here is that prohibition has literally killed liquor, and it is Nucky who has become the owner of its corpse and ghost. What is important to note is that, in Lucanian fashion, the only time Nucky possesses liquor, this lost object, is when it is dead. In addition, he never really has it. Later in the series, obstacle after obstacle impedes Nucky's selling of liquor, both in quality of the product and police raids. Nucky may own the corpse of alcohol, but he can never truly grasp that which he owns. This owning of alcohol only once it is deceased, and yet never really having it, is a perfect representation of Lacan's object A. The second lost object of Nucky Thompson is his baby boy. In the last episode of the first season, Mrs. Schroeder enters Nucky's suite in her last attempt to discover who Nucky really is. Nucky, in his scene most unlike himself, finally willingly submits, and it is his son he discusses. According to Nucky, after his child was born, he did not hold him until after a week had passed. On the day he finally did take his child in his arms, his baby was dead, and he had been so for days. His wife, Nucky says, having suffered from melancholia, cared for the baby as a corpse. I took him from her, he says, and I cradled him in my arms. That was the only time I ever held him. Nucky Thompson only truly had his child when he was already dead. In other words, he never got to have him, and it is in this scene that one begins to understand Nucky as a character. There is a void in Nucky, punched into him by his first experience with his child, which begs to be replaced by another. And this is why Nucky responds humanly to children in the series, more than to any other human being. This is Lacan's object A, the object never had that begs to be replaced. Now in terms of Nucky's two lost objects, liquor and child, there are major connections between them in the series, and these connections are represented visually and dialogically. The first is the visual provided in the first episode after the casket of John Barleycorn passes. What is seen is a man who is pushing a baby stroller within which, rather than a baby, there are a multitude of wine bottles. In this scene, the alcohol is in the place of the baby, or the baby and booze are synonymous. The fact is that both in the series cause addictions, both cause voids, and both die. A second way in which dead alcohol and dead children are connected is in the telling scene between Mrs. McGarry and Nucky in the first episode. Mrs. McGarry informs Nucky of Mrs. Schroeder's hospitalization and the subsequent loss of her child. While informing Nucky of this, she simultaneously hands him a framed poem she had written about the abolition of alcohol. Again, as shown in this exchange, the death of alcohol and the death of a child are connected dialogically and visually. Not only this, but the exchange between Nucky and Mrs. McGarry occurs spatially just a few yards from the baby incubator store featured in the show. This location is extremely important, for it is the place of the final connection of Nucky's two lost objects. The Boardwalk's baby factory, or baby incubator store, beside which Nucky is seen staring nostalgically and sadly at the creatures within in the first episode, is absolutely loaded with connections to alcohol. The premature babies inside are seen with bows wrapped around their waists, much like bottles of wine. The incubators in which they are placed have glass doors, much like a liquor cabinet. In addition, in episode 10 of the series, there is a connection made between the baby factory and the legal distilleries. Outside of the incubator store, Jimmy, Nucky's ex-protege, and his wife Angela and their son are standing outside of the store looking in. Jimmy jokingly says to his son, Look, Tommy, look, this is where we got you. They cooked you up in one of those incubators, wrapped you up in a diaper, and then they took you home. This reference to the illegal alcohol distilleries in which batches of beer or, wa or wine are cooked up, the alcohol of which was not meant to have survived in the first place, is not difficult to connect to premature babies, who would not have survived either had the incubator stores not intervened. 
Here, the creation of alcohol and the creation of human lives are linked. I will move away from Nucky as a character of analysis now and turn towards Angela Darmody. Angela is the second character in which the death of man and the death of alcohol are related. However, the way in which this occurs takes the connection to another level and references an additional idea of Lacan's. In episode 11, Angela goes to the Dietrich photography shop. In this scene, her child is at her side and Angela intends to leave her husband, Jimmy, to go to France with her lover, Mary. When Angela enters the shop, however, she discovers Mary Dietrich has already left for France with Mr. Dietrich. Angela is heartbroken when she realizes she has been abandoned and deceived. In the same moment, her son finds a photo forgotten in a distant part of the empty store, brings it to her, places it in her hand, and says, Look, Mommy, ghosts. The picture is blurry, worn, and scratched, giving the people within a ghost-like quality, but it is also obviously a picture of a bride and a groom. Now, the play of the photograph and the term ghost occurs on multiple levels. But one of the most important here in terms of Lacan has to do with the implication of the word ghost. Ghosts imply death, not only this, but ghosts imply haunting or possessing, and most importantly, a lack of existence. All four are characteristics of the lost object and all four relate to Angela in that she longs for the now dead relationship she had with Mary, even if she may have never known who Mary truly was. Mary haunts Angela, and this haunting is physically represented by the blurred photo, much in the way that the death that causes the lost object is represented by physical death in terms of ghosts. It does not really matter if the Mary she thought she knew was alive, just like it does not really matter if ghosts don't really exist. They still haunt. The fact Angela's child called the figure's ghost is important for one more reason. Another word for ghost, which Tommy could have just as easily said, is spirit. Spirits are ghosts, and most importantly, spirits are also liquors. This is a point at which a double entendre, a Freudian slip, seems to occur within the show. A Freudian slip spurs stink state, while a person who just made a slip would probably endorse the following statement, I just made a random meaningless goof, Freud's retort would be, the truth is spoken. Thus, according to Lacan's interpretation of Freud, when repression takes place, a word, or some part of a word, sinks down under, metaphorically speaking. The word does not thereby become inaccessible to consciousness, and it may indeed be a word that a person uses perfectly well in everyday conversation. But by the very fact of being repressed, that word, or some part thereof, begins to take on a new role. It establishes relations with other repressed elements, developing a complex set of connections with them. The word spirit is one of these repressed words that make up the web of the boardwalk empire subconscious. Alcohol in the movie is never referred to as a spirit, just like the word ghost is used by Tommy, and what will soon be seen, Holy Ghost is always used with Agent Van Alden instead of Holy Spirit. Spirit is the basis for what seems to be an underbelly network of hidden lost objects. As said before, alcohol and Mechie's little boy are lost objects, both of which are spirits. Spirit in terms of liquor and spirit in terms of the soul of the little Enoch boy. Likewise, Angela's object, lost object, Mary, is a spirit within the photo. The way in which Angela is affected by her lost lover is identical to the way Mecky is affected by his lost boy and the way all characters are affected by alcohol. These dead things will not go away. Rather, they become more effective, more valued, and more desired by the characters. In addition, the spirit or ghost is perfect to represent the object A, so just like the object A is questioned to exist in the first place, so too are spirits and ghosts questioned to exist. Apart from Mecky and Angela Darmody, there is one last character to whom alcohol, the spirit, and the underlying subconscious web are connected. That character is Agent Nelson Van Alden. Van Alden is the puritanical character of the show who, due to his religious beliefs, commits a great number of atrocities, including torture and murder in the name of God. One of these atrocities is Van Alden's affair with Lucy Danziger that causes her to become pregnant. Prior to Lucy's informing Van Alden of his possible child, Van Alden explains to his wife his feelings of dejection and of his plans to quit the FBI. His wife then responds to console him by saying, You're doing God's work there, Nelson. Nelson's challenging reply is, Then if God wants me to stay in Atlantic City, let him give me a sign. Lucy Danziger, 20 minutes later in the episode, comes to him pregnant and tells him that it is his child. Lucy Danziger is that godly sign. Thus, alcohol, babies, and the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit are connected, and are oppressed by the things that drive and haunt Boardwalk's characters flourishes once again under the word spirit. In addition, Van Alden's need to feel the power of the Lord grows increasingly frantic and violent throughout Boardwalk. One of the reasons for this is that Van Alden's character feels trapped in and powerless to destroy a city so sinful it has caused God himself to die off within the area. 
The Holy Ghost is a lost object for Van Alden, much in the way that Nucky's baby boy and Angela's lover are lost objects. As a result, he is willing to commit any number of atrocities to bring God back to the area and to feel God's presence again. Again, here we see a flash of the word spirit, this time in, the ter in terms of Holy Spirit or God, rather than liquor, the dead, or ghosts. Lost objects are connected in the subconscious of the series through, through spirit. Once the web of lost objects has been recognized, the question then becomes the purpose of their being linked in the first place. The answer lies within Lacan's theories of reflection. Every character in the series, and Bordeaux society in general, is affected by what he or she represses. In terms of alcohol and repression, the, con the connection is obvious. Alcohol is celebrated no more than during prohibition, when alcohol is socially repressed. The connection between Nucky and his dead child in terms of repression is the same. Though Nucky attempts to hide, overcome, and repress the truth of his dead child, he nevertheless is forced to action on behalf of it. In terms of the character Angela and repression, Angela attempts to repress her lesbian sexual desires and hide them from her husband Jimmy, but eventually she is forced to mourn and embrace what has been taken from her. Similarly, Van Alden's drive towards God causes atheistic leanings to be repressed and thus to dominate him. Lacan speaks about the repression of God directly, and what he says is particularly useful in the analysis of Van Alden's repression. Lacan states in his second seminar with the example of Dostoevsky's The, Brother, the Brothers Karamazov, as you know, the father Karamazov's son, Ivan, leads the latter into these audacious avenues taken by the thought of the cultivated man, and in particular, he says, if God doesn't exist, then everything is permitted. Quite evidently, a naive notion, for we analysts know full well that if God doesn't exist, then nothing at all is permitted any longer. Neurotics prove that to us every day. According to Lacan, if God does not exist, nothing is permitted, and if God fully exists, then all is permitted. This explains the argument made by Agent Van Alden's character entirely. Van Alden is the most frightening and immoral character of the entire show, and he is the Christian. Like the other characters, he is driven towards what he represses, and what he represses is the complete lack of prohibition, security, and godliness. Thus he murders, tortures, commits adultery, and challenges God. The point of Boardwalk Empires relating these multiple repressed lost objects of desire is to illustrate the structural reason for why prohibition failed in the 1920s and always fails. Failure of prohibition is not because alcohol is the greatest commodity ever created or because society ultimately realized the thing that deemed evil is actually innocent. Failure is rather due to the fact that people's minds do not allow what dies in their hands to disappear. When a thing like alcohol dies within the public's arms, it is the first time people feel they ever had it, whether or not the phenomenon is really true, unless they seek it out like they never did before. Failures of prohibition are also true in terms of oppression. When prohibition of any sort becomes the prevailing rule for people's lives, what is naturally repressed is complete lack of inhibition, and what is repressed is also what governs. Thus, killing alcohol is impossible because once it is prohibited, it becomes repressed and thus governs covertly. Sportwalk Empire shows ridding the world of alcohol through prohibition would be like trying to rid a parent of his or her desire for a child when the first one born quickly dies. Likewise, it would be like trying to force a man or woman not to be gay or lesbian after his or her first experience with a lover. It would also be like trying to ask a man to give up on a search for a god he believes might be dead. Prohibition of alcohol, of man, of theism or atheism will not happen because it is not natural for the human subject to let anything truly disappear. This is the point of boardwalk, that alcohol can be like a baby, like a god, like a lover, and that when it is lost, it grows all the more great.